Hi, I'm Rob. I'm Dave. And I'm Mr. Sink. And welcome to the Mr. Sink Show, where we show you how you can improve your home. Today, we're going to show you how to give your shower a makeover without all the expense and the fuss. And how to recycle and reuse the old shower. We'll also be interviewing a shower ceiling specialist with his tricks of the trade, including how to stop a leaking shower without replacing all the tiles. And get rid of that old mould. Well, let's get started. Okay, on site. And we have our dirty shower. Okay, well, let's check this out. This. Tiles look okay. We don't really need to ch change the tiles because they're still in pretty good nick. Um, the grout has had better days, I reckon. Look, there's some mould growing in the corner. There's even some grout missing around there. Um, and it could do with a really good clean. I mean, we can really save a lot of money here um, and just do like a quick makeover. Just clean it up, change the grout, and make it look brand new for a fraction of the cost. And I think I know the perfect person to do that for. Tony from TAC Tiling and Shower Seal. Come on down. <laughs> How are you, Tony? Hello, mate. Good, good. good. How are you? Can you help us? The shower. I sure can. That's what I do for a living. Let's go have a look. Let's have a look. Okay, well, we'll have a look at this. This looks like a common problem that happens to a lot of showers after a few years of use. Okay. You've got some grime, soap scum in the corners. Bit of mould, bit of grout missing around the drain, which is crucial to fix that because you get water leaking through gets underneath and starts lifting up tiles, so we'll fix that up as well. Okay. Remove all that old mouldy silicon. Now, now we, can we save the tiles? Just by looking at these, if we look at the tiles and we tap them, they're all pretty solid, meaning we can save these tiles, that's not an issue, it's more of a okay. cosmetic. So, so if you get like a, a hollow sound in the tiles? Drummy sound, a lot of times tiles have got a slight movement in them, that's when the job's a lot more serious. Things need to be removed, but at this stage, we can save the tiles. It's save, yes, it can be oh, saved. Okay. So we can do it at a fraction of the cost, which Correct. is fantastic. What we're going to do, we're going to remove all that silicon. I'm going to open up the gap around the drain so we can fill that with um, either grout or an epoxy, whatever's required at the time. We'll clean it all up, re grout it, and then we'll seal it with a penetrating sealer. And that should give the shower a lot more years. Okay, first thing we do with a a scraper with a sharp blade on it. As you can see, we just go through the process of uh, removing bits and pieces that uh, people have put in over the years. Silicon, patch up grout, which is a common occurrence that people do to their showers. do now we'll clean up what we've uh, what we've just removed what we'll do now is we'll use a dremel okay. to uh that's called the dremel that's called a dremel it's got a big diamond bit on it looks like a, an elephant's uh, dentist drill yes the reason the main reason for that that i use that is i'd like to roughen two surfaces that way the epoxy bonds to it and epoxy isn't readily available so if you are going to do this yourself you'd use a a corking compound which is a silicon based you can generally get that in whatever color your grout is and you don't need to do this then what we'll do now is i think um rob's going to give the shower a clean for you once it's clean i'll come back in we might regrout the base and then we'll seal the edges Okay, well, Tony's now finished preparing the shower. Now, the next step, Rob, is? Cleaning the shower. Okay. So I thought I'd take this opportunity just to show you um, a quick way of cleaning your shower, just by using some simple things like vinegar and some dishwashing soap. So tell me, Rob, I mean, everyone wants to know, what's the best way to clean your shower? The best way to clean the shower is to take your clothes off. Oh, okay, well I'm getting out of here. Well, I'm not gonna take my clothes off yet. I'll call you later when I take my clothes off. 
But for now, I'm just gonna show you, just with some vinegar and some soap, how we can give it a good quick, quick clean. Bit of a squeeze of the dishwashing liquid. Just give it a spray everywhere. Over the taps. Make sure you get even around the, um, the chrome parts of the shower and the shower rows. Okay, we'll leave this for about maybe 20 minutes. Come back and we'll wash it down. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna take this shower rose off and we're gonna give this a nice good clean. So in its place, just temporarily, I'm gonna put this in. This will make it a lot easier to wash down the shower. Now it's time to take my clothes off. And most importantly, so I don't wet my hand. Okay, you'll see that there is a lot of build up here. So the um, vinegar and the soap is probably not gonna be enough. So what I'm gonna use is a bit of baking powder, or baking soda, and scrub it down. Get a bit of a rub. Now give it a rinse. Beautiful. Do all the tiles as well. After you finish rinsing the shower down, best way to keep it clean and maintain it for everyday use is to squeegee. So if you do this every time you've had a shower, you don't have to worry about too much build up. Job done. Now I can get dressed. Okay, well I just got back to check the shower. Rob was meant to clean, uh, which he didn't do a very good job. There's still soap scum on the tiles, still pretty ordinary. So I'm gonna to have to do it myself and Rob can go and make some coffees. <laughs> what, what coffee do you want? Sure black, thank you. <laughs> Mine sugar. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be fine. The bulk of the soap scum is generally on your bottom two or three rows of tiles, but this one here will, will clean the lot. Soap scum, generally you need one of these to get off because it's a uh, it's happy being there, unless we, well, we entice it. There we are, look at all the, uh, just a, the dirty water coming off. And with a towel we just, just dry the excess off as much as you can. That's just a heat gun, your standard heat gun. What we're going to try and do is blow the water out from the internal corners so we can uh, seal it. It needs to be dry simply because silicones, grouts and epoxies won't bond if there's too much water behind it. Silicon, if you apply silicon on it when it's wet, it'll just peel off. As quick as it goes on, it'll come off. Same as the epoxy. With a grout, it's not too bad. You put an additive inside the grout, it'll bond but ideally it should, shouldn't have any water there. So that's why we're using the heat gun. It's a lot quicker than, you could leave it for a day, leave it overnight and then come back tomorrow and do it. But this way we can all get the job done in a day. Just your standard everyday little fan heater. So while that finishes drying off, we'll mix the grout, get the silicon organized and we'll come back and finish it all off. Well, we have Tony here from TAC Tiling and Shower Seal. I got that right this time, Yes, well done. Very good. And um, in this segment, Tricks of the Trade, we're going to talk to him about um, a few of the tricks of the trade. So, Tony, tell me, what is your trade and what do you do? Okay, well, I'm a qualified wall and floor tiler. Have been for 30 years now. Sounds like a long time, but yes, that's true. Um, I don't do a lot of wall and floor tiling anymore for builders as much. I do a lot of what we just did here today, repair leaking showers, bathroom renovations, and, uh, and so forth. What do you need to do to become a tiler if you want to become a tiler? It's a four-year apprenticeship, which is uh, generally it's 
three weeks working on the trade, one week you're at school, or it's one day a week you go to school, um, get your qualifications, and become a wall and floor tiler. Are there different types of tilers? Lots of different types of tilers. There's uh, like there's pool tilers, wall and floor tilers, people that specialise in marble, granite, stone. Saying that, it's generally the same apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. When you're dealing with stone, it's more of a stone masonry apprenticeship, but it's all in that same field. So what kind of tiler are you? I'm oh, a pretty good tiler. <laughs> <laughs> so can you share any of your tricks of the trade? Well, I shared a lot while we were doing the job. Number one, one trick was spray gun with the silicon. Mm -hmm. um, the way you mix your grout, the way you mix your glues, they've all got to be a certain consistency. And a lot of it's setting up, preparing the job. Know where you start, know where you finish, know what pieces you're going to get. It's not easy to just start at the door and work your way back, or start at one wall and work your way across. The wall's at a level, you've got to plumb it up. All sorts of little things that you spend half a day preparing, makes the job easier and a lot cleaner and neater later on. I've also noticed that you wear knee pads. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why you wear knee pads? You're always in the praying position. Always in the praying position, praying that I'll get a real job, but no. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to any young kid who wants to become a tiler? Uh, it's not an easy trade, but it's uh, fulfilling in the end. You go to a place where you get an empty room, you turn it into a bathroom, you can do, you know, there's all sorts of tiling, tessellated tiling, mosaics, which is really intricate and all that sort of stuff. Your basic tiling, but still in the end, you've got a finished product and you get a lot of um, satisfaction and achievement when you finish it. Okay, we have a bucket of water, an empty bucket, some sealer, some soap, silicon, a squidgy, and a gun. So what are we gonna do with all this? Okay, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna prepare everything for the repair of the shower. Number one, okay. small bucket is simply to mix some grout in. Uh, what you've got to do is try and find a, a grout that's a matching colour to what's there already. So we'll mix a bit of this and a bit of this and we'll try and get as close to the colour that's there as possible. Okay, so there's a bit of an art to colour matching, is there? Well there is because you don't, there's lots of different grouts on the market. Um, every company makes their own shade, their own colour, so we get as close as we can. Okay. This white liquid is a grout additive. What this does is helps the grout bond to the surface. If you just mix it with water, which is what generally happens, it'll work, but it won't work in this situation because we're doing a repair. So this will help it bond to the old grout, to the tiles. I don't use that fully in there because then it gets too hard to work with. So we mix it and mix a bit of water in there as well. So what, can you actually show us what the correct texture of oh, the works. grout should be? Once, it's, once I've got it where, uh, where I want it, I'll pull a bit out and we'll show you. It should be like the consistency of a, a toothpaste. There it is there. As you can see, it's consistency of toothpaste. So if you make it a bit too wet, just keep adding a bit more grout. It's just very simple. Okay. What this is, is just dishwashing liquid and water. And that, I'll show you why we need that later when we're working with silicon. Okay, so now that we've got this product, what we'll do, we'll do the grout first. This will go around the base of the shower and around the drain, and then the silicon will go up the internal walls where the, the, the two walls meet. Okay, we're back in the shower. The heat has done its job, so we'll turn that off, get rid of that. If you leave the grout for a few minutes, it starts to go hard, but once you stir it again, it goes back to sloppy, so it's not a problem. Grab a bit of this, put it on our squeegee. In this sense, the shower was pretty good. The grout's still in one piece, so it doesn't really need to be re-grouted. So we'll just apply this to the corners. Because it's got the additive in it, it'll bond and it'll stay there. Normal grout would just fall out. That's a very important tool when you're tiling. What's that? Don't leave home without it, my finger. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm doing is pushing it in, just so once this goes in and hits the two tiles, 
it virtually bonds them together because it's a bonding agent. So it just gives it more chance of staying there. Ah, gotcha. Okay, just looks messy now, but once we clean it. Grout, generally you can leave for 10 or 15 minutes to dry, but once you put the additive in, which we did before, the grout dries a lot quicker. So you've got to move that a little bit faster and get it cleaned before it, uh, it dries. We're putting the, the, the sponge on a bit of an angle, so it gives it a bit of a, a cove effect. Okay, the next process we do, we're just gonna fill around the drain. What we're doing is putting masking tape over the drain because we don't want grout going into your drain because once that goes hard, it'll block, off your, block up your drain. Just cut off the edges. Again, the grout with the additive. As you can see, it's been sitting there for a while, so it looks like it's gone hard, but once you stir it up, it'll be fine. Chocolate mousse. Chocolate mousse. With the squeegee, you just push it in as hard as you can into those joints. That's why the masking tape's there. If you do that, and that all goes into your drain, it'll clog it all up. We're nearly there. So what we do now is we grab the heat gun, we'll dry the internal corners, make sure all these around the showers dry, and we'll silicon that. Okay, next process is we're gonna put the colored silicon into the internal corners. We use a the silicon there because corners tend to flex, so this has got more chance of surviving. With the nozzle, determine how big you cut that depends on how big the joint is on the wall. That's an average joint so we'll cut that on a angle like that. You can see that. So all we need now is soap and water which I said before, a nice pole stick and toilet paper. So it'll all make sense in a minute. Apply the silicon. Soap and water, we spray that on. Everybody spray that on. What's the soap and water do? What that does is stops the silicon from sticking to the, the tiles now. Once it's wet, silicon doesn't stick. So we've applied the silicon where we want it, where it's dry. Again. The pole stick obviously stops all the excess. Correct, you get rid of all the excess. Now, I generally smooth it off with the tool I showed you before, this one. Okay, now the inside of the shower is finished. We'll just seal the outside of the shower. So we'll change our silicones over. We'll get rid of this colored one. We'll just put a clear silicon in. Again, soap and water. We we'll use soap and water. You see a lot of people, when they're doing the silicon, they put the silicon on, lick their finger, and rub it along. As soon as you lick your finger, you're putting bacteria into that silicon. It goes mouldy a lot quicker. This way here, soap and water, less chance of it happening. These corners and showers are pretty crucial to seal properly because that's where they always leak from. Right. Okay, well the shower's finished now. Um, you can scrub and clean this tomorrow to your heart's content. Get it as clean as you like. Uh, like I said, in the internal corners, you could also put a two-part epoxy. That's gotta be done by a qualified tradesman. It's not an easy product to use, and it's not readily available. You could also do the silicon, the colored silicon, like I did on the internal corners, like I did here. Very easy to do. Apply it neatly, spray gun with soap and water. Go and buy a paddle pop, have an ice, ice cream stick, and you can do that, that's very easy. Toilet paper just keeps everything clean. Uh, and that's it, shower's ready to use uh, tomorrow morning, 24 hours, it's ready to go. All done boys. Thank you Tony. No worries mate, thank Hope you very much. With it. Thanks mate. No problem, I'll send you the bill. <laughs> go and have a look at it, see if you're happy with it. Um, it's come up pretty good, uh, all the mould and grime's gone. We've re-grouted it, resealed it. Be ready to use tomorrow morning. Again, tomorrow morning if you want to give it another scrub and clean, by all means you can do that and it's ready to go.
and it's a lot, it, lot cheaper than actually doing doing a whole show. Oh, definitely. You're talking hundreds in comparison to thousands, so it's a big difference. Yeah. So with the green section again, we're just going to show the three R's again: recycle, reduce, and reuse, which is silicons. Now we've got the one which has already been used. So that one there, if we're going to dispose of it properly, because it is a recyclable item, we can actually throw that in our recycling bin. Also, if you're going to reuse silicon if it hasn't been fully used, you can either get like a screw or something that can actually seal it for reusing purposes down a track so it doesn't dry out. That is the main purpose of that. So that can be reused. Also, things like all the cleaning products like the vinegars and all the other things that Rob used to clean the shower with, once these are used, we can also throw those in the recycling bin because most of them are plastic. But things like the sponge, sponges and packets that was cleaned with, same thing again, this is recyclable, so it can be put in there. Sponges that, that Rob used to clean the shower screen with, that is not, is not a recyclable item, has to be thrown in there. Now also other things like your baking sodas, your, your squidgies, these can be reused because sometimes you can even just replace the blade. But these are the ones, so once it's finished used, you just dispose of it, but this is still reusable. When Tony removed all that silicon, that is not recyclable, but it can be put in your general waste bin. Also, you notice that he was using a, uh, he was using a lot of uh, uh, icy pole sticks. Now, if you're, if you're going to prepare yourself for something like this, it might sound silly, but if, if you want to get your kids or you want to have your own icy poles, lick it away and then reuse those icy pole sticks, brilliant idea. That is recycling and reusing and reducing at the same time. So that's another way of doing it as well. Otherwise, you can buy icy pole sticks from certain places. But in a situation like that, you're helping out the environment at the same time by and enjoying an icy pole. <laughs> now, in regards to also the bottles as well, depending on what's inside, they're generally your, your cleaning products. They're in general quite safe. So um, if you, we don't recommend you, you tip them down your sinks and that type of stuff because some of these are acidic and they can actually burn even your parts and your plumbing underneath. So what is actually recommended is keeping in the bottles that they are because they're generally safe in there and then recycling them with whatever's left over inside there within your recycling bins or whatever bin is suitable. But just remember, with your three R's, reduce, recycle and reuse, but at the same time, always read labels and just double check with procedures. Okay, well, Tony's finished his job. Even the squeak has come out of here. Yeah, wow. And um, look how clean it is. Oh, all the mould in the corner is all gone. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Well, the owners of the house will be pretty wrapped with this. They'll get at least another 10 years out of this. Mm -hmm. And um, it's all clean, leak proof now. Yep. Great. Done a good job. Hey, Rob, you forgot to fix the shower. No, I just gave it a good clean. Oh, beautiful. Let's put this back. We'll show how, the guys how easy this is to do. Now you, although this is plumbing, this is not actually something that you need to be a licensed plumber to do. So... Oh, you don't want to get mad here. Okay, so put the Teflon on, and when you put Teflon on, always go the same way you screw in, which is clockwise. Crooked. There you go. Done. So today we had a great time resealing and cleaning an old shower. <laughs> we all know you did. We also found out how to recycle and reuse the old one. And we learned an easy way to fix a leaking shower without replacing any tiles. At a fraction of the price. Now we'd love to hear from you. So if you have any questions about today's show or any future projects that you may have, contact us on our website at www.mrsinktv.com.au We all hope you enjoyed the show. Well, I'm off to have a shower. So, we'll, we'll see, see you, you next time. time.